Hey guys, I'm back. I think this is like take 57. So here we go again. Uh, last time we left off, I had just finished the hood and we were getting ready to put the car, the front end back together on the car so we could take it out and get some baseline tests with it as far as acceleration uh, with, the, with the engine in it, the internal combustion engine, so that we can compare it to our electric version when we got it done. That really didn't work out for us. Um, we have an app on the phone that we were using trying to do this and we couldn't get it to work. We found that we needed another part which we ordered but it's not going to be here for um, at least another couple weeks. So we're not going to get any testing done on it and that's okay with me. But uh, we do have the car jacked up. I got the rear on some ramps. I got the front on um, on uh, jack stands and uh, we're getting ready to I'm getting ready to try to take the motor out from and go underneath the vehicle with it. So we're not going to pull the engine out of the top. We're going to drop it down. But I thought this would be a real good time to show you what the drivetrain looked like and what we had to put in the car. And um, this is the componentry we're going to install in place of the engine. So this is, a, this is called an AC50 kit. The kit uh, is made by EVTV and I bought this on the EVTV online store. Now, the motor is an AC50, which is a 9 inch motor. It has a 9 inch uh, barrel on it, there, and, uh, or case. It's a double ended shaft. So we have a 7 8 diameter shaft here. For our accessories, I'm going to run an AC pump and a power steering pump off of that. And over here we have an inch and an eighth diameter shaft that we're going to use to, uh, that the clutch and flywheel assembly will mount on and then it will go into the transmission. This motor is advertised at 108 volt and 650 amps it will produce 121 foot pounds of torque and 76 horsepower. Now that torque value is higher than our engine that's in the car but the horsepower is a little less so I'm thinking that uh, you know we'll be pretty snappy down on the low end but uh, probably um, we'll give it up on the top end and, and when I say top end I'm talking about 120 mile an hour plus. Uh, this car will probably go 140 miles an hour. Uh, it may go 140 miles an hour with this motor in it. I don't know if I'll ever drive it that fast but it may not, uh, it may not be as uh, powerful uh, up in those higher RPMs. So I think it's going to be a good mate. This motor is rated uh, uh, for vehicles up to 3,000 pounds. We are beneath 3,000 pounds. Um, I think uh, I think our car weighed 2480 before we ever started anything on it. I weighed it and that's what it weighed. I believe uh, we might come in between 2600 and 2700 pounds by the time we're done. I think we're going to gain um, you know at least 125 pounds um, maybe more. Um, but we'll see. But anyway, the kit, back to the kit, it comes, like I said, with the motor. It comes with a wiring harness. It comes with our, our Tyco Kilovac contactor. It comes with a pre-charge relay. We need a pre-charge relay in order, this is the controller, and the pre-charge relay will, uh, the controller has capacitors in it that must be pre-charged. And, our, our, and they've taken care of all that with us. They included all the parts that we need to get the pre-charge done on the controller. Also, the controller needs a heat sink of some sort. The controller, when it reaches 85 degrees C, which is about 185 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe, starts to limit power. In other words, you will not be able to get 650 amps out of it. It won't let it do it because the heat will become too intense and and uh, start to burn up the controller so it it regulates that so it won't get any hotter 
So the secret to that is to cool it. You need some sort of a heat sink to do that. Uh, whether it be just a, a big old fanned piece of aluminum, maybe with a fan running on it, or in this case, we're using a chill plate, which is probably the best and most efficient way to strip heat away from any kind of a component is with water. So if you look at this chill plate here, you can see it. It's all milled out right here, and uh, it's just a. Uh, it does the water just does a loop through here, you know, comes in and runs around and goes back out. So it even comes with the fittings for the uh, for the holes there, and um, and here's the gasket for it, uh, which goes in the gasket groove, and then our controller just mounts right on top of that. And uh, that's how we'll strip heat away from the controller and keep it nice and cool, so we will always have full power when we ask for it. So and you know, uh, well, let's see. Here we got our we got our. This is called a Curtis 840 display unit, I believe is the proper name for it. And this is just a bit of instrumentation. Um, and it also is you can also program the controller through this piece of electronics here. Uh, but this will display motor temperature, motor RPM, voltage, current, and also display. Uh, controller temperature. Um, I think we can do we can get those things on some uh, a lot of the other gauges uh, but we do need this to program I believe the controller um, but I don't know if we'll be doing any mounting at the end of the dash but that's that's for later on uh, but uh, that's pretty much it guys um, that's really all there is to it um, it's it should be very simple um, and it's all and like I said a lot of the a lot of the stuff is completely thought out for us with it being in this kit form making it basically very plug-and-play so that you don't have to be some sort of an electrical engineer in order to uh, make it go down the road so I think that's uh, that just about covers it um, so I'm anxious to get started on this. Uh, I've been hesitant about it um, uh, as far as getting into it because I want to be sure and get the engine out of it uh, in one fatal swoop. I don't want to start on it and then start on something else. So I got a little bit of free time here, I think, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to at least uh, you know get all the guts tore out of it um, and all that. So we'll get started on it and uh, hopefully. You know, it won't be long and we'll be getting all this stuff in the, in the car. And uh, we'll be pressing forward. So that's where I'm at right now. The next videos are going to be about getting the engine and all the gasoline crap out of the car. So stay tuned, guys, and thanks for watching.